How many of you know that the Lord has been better than good to you? I, I used to wonder what they were talking about when they said that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I did not know where I would be. But the older I get and the more living I do, the more I understand that God does not have to do anything. God does not have to blow the breath of life into us. God does not have to blow strength into us. God does not have to do anything at all. And yet God keeps making the sun to rise. God keeps giving us day and night and all the things that we need. And thus God has been better than good. Yeah. So many times. So many times. He's been better than good to me. So many times. Yes. to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we continue our series, The Gospel in Elemental, and we are taking the Disney Pixar movie Elemental alongside 2 Corinthians and seeing what God has to teach us during this month of June. We have learned that 2 Corinthians is a letter from the Apostle Paul to the people at the church of Corinth. And the people at the church of Corinth are unlike any of the other churches that Paul has started. And they're unlike any of these other churches because they are very learned and very wealthy people. They're very cosmopolitan. And Corinth is on the water where there's lots of trade happening. You remember in 1 Corinthians, we have the soliloquy on love. Love is patient. Love is kind. And, and, and Paul says in that list that you might be like a clanging gong or a cymbal. 
But if you don't have love, doesn't matter. Worthless. Well, well, that might seem like an out of place line, except for the people of Corinth are the folks who made the gongs and cymbals. And if you've ever made or manufactured anything with your hands that you're really proud of, the last thing you want somebody to do is tell you that it doesn't matter. Paul's having a talk with the people of Corinth. They are saying to Paul that maybe because you've been in jail so much, you don't really know this Jesus. And and they're saying that there are other people who are coming to Corinth to teach us about Jesus. And they are saying things that are different than what you're telling us. And Paul has got a little bit frustrated with them. And Paul is saying, I started you. You are my children. It doesn't matter what anybody else says because they're wrong. But it doesn't matter what anybody else says because the Lord sent me to you. And because of the resurrection, we know that what God is saying is true. It doesn't matter what any human being says. It matters what God says. And when we get to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul has been fussing with them for a while. And and he's saying, don't forget who Jesus is. And don't forget that you don't just get to say that you're a member of the community and check good church person off the list. What he's saying is your life must reflect that you are in connection, in relationship with Jesus Christ. So hear now these words from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in the 13th verse. Actually, I'm going to start at the end of the 12th verse. And, um, and we're going to go through chapter 5, verse 1. I'm reading from Eugene Peterson's uh, paraphrase of the Bible called The Message. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. We're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believe it, so I said it, we say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. Did you hear that this morning? Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the Outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without God's unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. For instance, we know that when these bodies of ours are taken down like tents and folded away, They will be replaced by resurrection bodies in heaven. God made, 
not handmade, and we'll never have to relocate our tents again. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are indeed our holy and our worthy God. So fall fresh on us, Holy Spirit, and speak, for we have come expecting a word from you. So hide this, your servant, behind that old rugged cross. So that everything that is said and everything that is done comes straight from you, O God. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. More and more grace. More and more praise. So many times in life, it seems like things aren't going our way. It seems like all we get is bad news. I woke up this morning and again, there was a report of a missing child and a friend colleague of mine, her husband is missing out west. And over and over again, it seems like people are just disappearing and missing. And then if we turn our, our minds to international news, we've lost more than 100 children over the last few days in the Israeli-Palestine conflict. People are sleeping outside. Children are eating because they're not going to school every day, and that's how they get their meals. Everywhere we look, there is an opportunity to say that things are hard and life is bad, but where is God? But, but what this scripture is inviting us to say is, not where is God, but am I doing my part in the God story? But because, because you see, we have the people called Christian, the people who understand the relationship and connection between God and God's people have a God-given advantage. The scripture says all things work together, right? All things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That's the version of this in Romans. In this text, in Eugene Peterson's translation, it says every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. Now, this is what that does not mean, <laughs> This does not mean that you are always going to have your way. This does not mean that you are always going to have what you want. This, this does not mean that things are always going to be easy and bright and shiny. And even if God said, go do it, it doesn't mean that there won't be a bump in the road. What it means is that, and the scripture last week reminds us of that, there will be trouble in this lifetime. There will be opportunities to trust God in this lifetime. Last week we met Ember Lumen and her temper got her in a little bit of trouble. Did, did, you, did you see the clip? Did, did you, have you seen the movie yet? Her temper blew up her family's fire shop. And now she's out to fix it. Because we're like that, right? When, when we make a mistake, we want to cover it up before it's discovered. Because we don't want to have to explain the mistake that we made. Hmm, maybe that was just me. Bernie, Ember's father, says, you don't have to use your temper to express your frustration. 
You don't have to blow up. You don't have to be angry. Rather, the more excellent way is to make a connection with the people who are making you angry. Now, that's hard work. It's hard work to step back and say, all right, I won't run you off the road even though you cut me off. It's hard work not to use our four-letter words to degrade people instead of using words like joy and hope and peace and love to build people up. It's hard work to be the church. It is hard work to be emissaries, to be lights of Jesus Christ in the world when the world has said the easiest way is to forget you. The more excellent way, the way for those of Jesus is to remember that when things look bad, God is working for your good. And God is working for your best and highest good, not the thing that you want to settle for. Okay, it says, while we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. And then it says, don't keep this quiet. This is the good news. If we believe it, we ought to talk about it. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, if we do that, we might understand that trouble does not, in fact, last always. That we don't have to settle for the least of what God wants to give us. And that in this life, while there will be trouble, there is also grace. And because there is grace, we ought to be living out of a place of praise. You can't see what the end is going to be. So why are you giving up? Why are you quitting? Why are you downtrodden and afraid? Why are you saying, well, maybe that's not what the Lord told me to do? It says, what we believe is that Jesus is going to raise us up the same way that Jesus himself was raised up. That, That doesn't mean anything to them, I don't think, Pastor Chris. You know, because people walk around as if they're already dead. That they're walking around as if they're defeated. That they're walking around as if they hold power in their hands. Remember the scripture last week said, it is God's power that fuels us, that pushes us that enlivens us and that gives us hope. It says every detail. Mystery, it doesn't say some details. It says every detail works to your advantage And to God's glory. So if we ask God for something that is just for us, but doesn't bring glory to God, don't expect it. And if we ask God for something that brings glory to God, but disenfranchises us, don't expect it. But when we get together in connection with God... And we say, God, help me to glorify you through this detail. Then we can expect God to work it out. More and more grace. More and more people. You got to talk about it. More and more praise. Praise. 
praise is a way of being in the world. It is a way of expectation. Praise is a way of expecting that God is keeping God's promises in our lives. Praise is a way to say, God, I know that you're already ahead of me on this. God, I know that I'm just bringing this to you in prayer, but you saw this coming years ago. So tell me now, what is the next step? All I'm going to do, God, is praise you because I know you've already already got this. Are you living with expectation and the outward sign of praise in your life? We encounter Ember today. She's pretty upset. We meet Wade Ripple, he's a water person, and he is a city inspector. He has discovered that the pipes in Ember's family shop are not up to code. And he's given her several tickets. And if they can't bring it up to code, then the shop will have to close. This is devastating for Ember. Her whole life and her whole family's life has been about this shop. Her, fam her family left their homeland and came to Element City to make a better way and a better life for themselves through this shop. This shop is everything. And now Ember has really messed it up. And it's gonna be shut down. But Wade, Water Wade, he, he listens to Ember's story. And he has a soft spot in his heart for Ember. So he agrees to introduce Ember to his boss, Gail Columbus, Columbus. I did not say that's right. And they go and meet her at a sports game. Watch this. Yeah, so, uh, Gail. <laughs> My name is Ember Lumen. My family runs a fire shop. Wade wrote us a bunch of tickets yesterday. What kind of call was that? Uh, Lumen? Yeah, a uh, fire shop with 30 citations. 30? <laughs> Anyway, friend, I was hoping we could work something out. Come on, wrap are your eyes in the back of your head? Oh, no. Yeah, bummer. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the 30 citations. Do you mind? There's a game going on. Fireball. Fireball? Actually, I do mind. This is my life we're talking about, not just some game. Some game? This is the playoffs. So forgive me if I don't want to hear a sob story about the problems of some little shop. Well, that little shop matters way more than a bunch of overpaid cloud puffs blowing some ball around. I dare you. Say cloud puffs one more time. Cloud puffs. <laughs> oh, no. What? Butts, man. He's been in such a funk because his mom has been sick. That is so not cool. He's doing his best. We love you, Butts! We love you, Butts! We love you, Butts! Come on! We love you, Butts, everybody! We love you, Butts! We love you, Butts!
I'm back. Check out who found the gift shop. Woo! I gotta admit, that was pretty cool. Yeah. You can see why I can get all churned up, but as a cloud puff who used to come here with her dad, oh, these wins mean a little bit more. And as a fireball who's supposed to take over her dad's shop, I sure don't want to let him down. And I could use a win too. Gail goes on to say to Ember that if she can find the source of the problem, she will cancel the tickets and allow the shop to go on. Sometimes in our life, we must remember where our connection lies. They found a way to find a common ground. Gail told the story of being at the games with her father and while that was so important and Ember told her about why the shop was so important to her family. They made a connection to find the most excellent way forward. And that's what God wants from us. God wants us to make a connection so that we might experience God's grace in a new and excellent way. Not the grace we've heard about, but the grace we experience for ourselves. See, the scripture says these hard times are small potatoes compared to what's coming. <laughs> there's a lavish celebration prepared for us. It says there's more here than you can see with your eyes. And the things we see now won't be here tomorrow, so don't worry about them. It's what we can't see. The stories, the connections, the relationships, it's what we can't see that will last forever. So what do you need to do to reconnect with Jesus today? I mean, we live in a world where everything else is more important than our relationship with God. How are you going to change that? Where are you going to spend time with God? Are you going to wake up a few minutes early and read the scriptures or pray or be still and just say, God, speak to my heart? Or maybe just maybe when you're feeling down, just enter into a season of praise. Say, I'm not going to complain this summer. I'm going to praise in expectation that God has got this. The scripture says these bodies are going away. And they're going to be replaced with resurrection bodies. <laughs> and those bodies are God made and we'll never have to relocate our tents again. Here's what that means. You have a God given advantage in this life. Take advantage of it now, or you might miss out on what is later. God is making new life, and it comes through the advantage called grace. You gonna sign up for it? Takes connection. You gonna spend more time with God? Put God first. Tell Jesus all the things that are going on. Facebook doesn't need to know. But God does. And then you'll experience the advantage of grace in this world. Expecting and praising your way to what God has a head. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. We're so grateful that you have chosen to worship in this place today. Now rise as we share the benediction together. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God. Go forth sharing the good news of the God-given advantage. Go forth connecting with God, praising the one who gives you grace. The Lord turned his face to